Hi, this is New York Chem Coach with the last three questions from the multiple choice part of the New York State Chemistry Regents June 2015. And that's going to be questions 48 and 49, which you see right here. So pause the video, answer 48 and 49, and then I'm going to switch it over to question 50. This is question 50. Answer question 50. Pause the video. And then let's go through the answers. Okay, I'm going to go back to 48 and 49. For 48, the answer was choice 3, and for 49, it was 4. Now let's go through these two, and then we'll wrap it up with question 50. So in 48, it's asking about the number 1 in the IUPAC name for the three, uh, three of these alcohols. Um, so, we have a graph of boiling points for alcohols, and we're supposed to use that for questions 48 and 49, but the naming isn't tied into, well, it's tied into the graph, but they're really asking you a naming question here in 48. The number one that you see in front of the names for all of these um, alcohols, these three alcohols, just means the position of the hydroxyl group on the molecule. So number one means that the OH was on the first carbon. So when you learn how to name organic compounds, that's a basic piece of information that you should know. So did you need the rest of the information on the graph to answer that question? My, my answer to you is no. So let's take a look at 49. Well, let's go back to 48. Let's take propanol just so I make my point. Prop means three carbons. So I have three carbon atoms. The OL ending on each of them tells me I have an OH group, making it an alcohol, and the one means on the first carbon. And it doesn't matter whether that first carbon, in this case, is the carbon to the left, or if I number it opposite, the carbon on the right. Okay, so I'm just going to use the one on the left. Why? Because I can. Because I can just flip the molecule and it's the same thing. So all it means is that one of these three positions, and let me erase the rest of these numbers here, I have an OH group. So I could have the OH here, I could have put it here or here, and then the rest of these you fill in with H's. That's all it means. If this had been 2-propanol, this OH group would have been on the second carbon instead. That's it. Let's take a look at 49. What can be concluded from the graph? So what do I have? I have alcohols, and I'm looking at the boiling points at standard pressure, and notice what's happening is meth is one carbon, eth two, prop three, but four, and pent is five. As the number of carbon atoms is increasing, so is the boiling point. All right. Let's see if that is any of the choices. And lo and behold, when you go ahead and you go through them, you find that it's choice four. Let's move to question 50. For question 50, we're dealing with two different trials uh, from a student investigation. And we're looking at the effect of concentration on the reaction between HCl and Mg, changing only the concentration of HCl. Okay, compared to trial one, what is the expected reaction time for trial two and the explanation for that result? The answer for question 50 was two, but let's take a look at what we have here. In trial one, they both have the same volume. In trial one to two, they both have the same mass of magnesium. We're looking at reaction time, and what do we do? We doubled the concentration of hydrochloric acid so therefore, the reaction time should go down, meaning that they, there's more HCl around to collide with the magnesium, and therefore, it's going to take a shorter amount of time for the reaction because there are more, quote-unquote, effective particle collisions. So the answer is choice two. Well, this is uh, the 50th question from the 50 multiple choice from the New York State Chemistry Regents from June 2015. Uh, if you like the videos, please hit the like or the up arrow or the thumbs up arrow below the video. Check out New York Chem Coach and um, take
take a look at some more questions.